I've selected a few documents which I want to show you to show my pre-production skills. This was our film proposal. This was for potential investors so they could read more about the project to help maybe interest them. It was also a good thing for the production team to refer back to what the story was, who the characters were, and our own production schedule. It helped us to clearly outline the budget and decide on our target audience. So we made a list of the staple ingredients of any film, short film or advert, a tagline serving to clarify the point of the film, the genre helping us to clarify the target audience, the duration, the logline, which is a brief summary of the film with one line, and a brief synopsis. Then we had character descriptions. This enabled me as the writer to give a brief overview of each character and their personalities and relations to other characters. We also included a little bit of information on the crew members. The director, Emma Kinney, myself the screenwriter, and the production team. And the cast list, just in case there are any familiar names. And our unique selling point, more information for the investors on how this film could be different from the others. And an exciting venture for them to get involved in. This was our production schedule. We started pre-production in October 2011. We opened our casting UK wide because we wanted the best actors to suit each role. Actors could send in audition videos online, but we also had two open audition days over one weekend. Our principal photography was shot in June, but there was there is a more detailed production schedule coming up. And this was our budget that we were hoping to do the film for. We actually ended up doing it on a lot less. And how much everything was needed. It was good because we had a lot of the equipment for free. And it was really transport and living for our actors that cost the most. Here is the proposal appendix. This shows a bit more information really about how we break down the script and how we put it into storyboarding. So as I mentioned before we have the treatment which basically tells you the story of the film. Okay and here's a good thing that I find with shot lists especially when dealing with a script. Um, I wrote the script but what helped was Emma and I, the director, sat down and we talked through what shots we would want at each point. Just talking about how, how much movement we want in the scene and where we want the camera to go. As you can see, the red are the shot list. These are storyboards that I drew up so that everyone could just get a visual impact of the story as well and what we we're hoping to achieve and it also helps just to think about where you're going to put the camera and the lights I mean in this scene we actually had quite a lot of lights we had a very small location where they were sitting around so it was a quite difficult shoot so when we were on camera we were either that side of the room or the other end of the room with about four or five lights. You, on Miracle Grow we worked with dado lights and redheads. And you see this um, scene at the start of the production showreel with characters coming down the stairs. It's trying to play on the character's paranoia. I usually am in charge of the camera department um, on all films that I work on for online or um, documentaries or feature films. I know what equipment I want. This is just simply, uh, this was booking with Bournemouth University, um, making sure I got the tracking dolly. Um, I usually, uh, I have a lot of my own equipment, but I rent equipment 
um, when I need it from Calumet, um, especially microphones or lights. Um, I don't have them myself, so it's usually just good to go there. I think it's really essential when you've written your own scripts or ideas to get um, opinions from other people um, and when they read them. And it's great because it can really help, like, you think of things a different way or if people are unsure of something that you thought was quite straightforward, then you can work on that and just make sure you are. Now, this is our schedule was our schedule in June. Um, this is an important thing, especially when shoots are, are very long. <laughs> like, this show tells us, no, oh, I'll just miss this. Um, what, what date we're shooting, what scene on, whether it's daytime, what location, how many hours we're meant to be doing there, and what actors will be in the scene. As Nasty was the main character of Sophia, she was in quite a few scenes. It's just a really good thing to have a production schedule because when I'm shooting I need to know how long I've got for that scene, how long I've got to get on with things, you know, and it becomes like especially here when you've got quite a lot of scenes and we're out on location there in the countryside. Uh, another part of production, getting cast travel and crew, sorting out expenses. Got um, a lot of experience in that when uh, we had actors from, I think Yvonne was from up north. So we needed her train times and know exactly when she's coming in and how much that was costing. And Leon, I think he was from London. So it was just a good way to sort out those details. We would have a lot of meetings um, during the pre-production uh, to go over the areas of finance, budget, script, audition. We also kept minutes for each of these. So if someone didn't come to a meeting then they could know what was going to, what happened or, you know, where we'd progress to. Miracle Girl is a film I wrote and shot. This is a sh scene earlier that I go through in my storyboards, playing on the character's paranoia. This was another scene which I thought well, the frame worked really well to frame characters. And this was a breakup scene. It was important to build up the tension and the plot in this scene. With the use of colour and handheld camera movements. Here is a scene where two characters go meet friends in... We shot this at BH24 Studios in the countryside. It was an old abandoned airfield, but it was great for what we needed and what we needed the characters to look like the location to look like and it worked really well for what we wanted at the time. We're using tracks here to pull out of the scene just kind of like leaving the story behind and letting the chaos ensue. This is a scene shot in pool docks between two characters. This is another scene which was difficult to shoot because we were right on a road. But using directional mics and radio mics you can cut a clearer sound so the sound isn't picking up the noise from the environment and it can also be done in post-production. I like to make my shots interesting to the eye like this character pulling through. And this is the ending scene. This was from a series of live music videos in which I was a studio camera operator. During the live set, it's essential to use your own initiative with the shots. What angles the audience will find interesting, how you can give a different side of the performance. This was a documentary I shot about the student union president of Bournemouth University. I wanted to be able to show 
what the job entailed and show students things that they might not see or know ordinarily. Born With It was a talent-based documentary television series, hopefully to be commissioned by Channel 4 or MTV. I started working on it in November 2012. Each episode is from a different talented individual or group and their industry. We try to look into the real side of the industry through shattering dancers, singers and fashion designers or even an ice skater. I then shot interviews with industry experts to find the truth about each industry and what the public don't know. This was a round table debate I filmed for the energy forecasters. They were debating the results of their energy survey. We had one static camera and one camera handheld ca to capture reactions and to get close-ups of the forecasters. The energy forecasters had their own YouTube channel in which we uploaded the videos of each topic that came up and then individual interviews. I also made a short film that was solely based on their industry predictions. <laughs> okay, so here I'm selecting um, a clip of dead sound that I don't need. So I've clipped one end and the other, and then you select the clip and take it away. And then drag the sound to where you need it to be. Then check the sound to make sure it sounds okay. You can also select the end of each clip and make it's like a cross dissolve um, and there's noise subdues. You can get rid of any unwanted footage. Maybe you want a clip to be shorter, then simply cutting the first point of the scene so that you don't. As you can see, my audio is attached to my camera. This is the sound from inside the camera that has been recorded. Um, usually for better sound, you will record the sound um, separately to the camera. And then you can go along and link all the clips up to the sound. And a uh, easy way of doing this is um, a package called Pluralizer and you put it on the timeline and it like snaps it all together it, it's a great system here I'm detaching the audio because I don't want it in this showreel and here I'm showing all the different transitions that you can do with Final Cut you usually add them between the clips and they're present like cross dissolve, dissolving one clip to the other, which you'll have seen earlier in the showreel. As you can see, it, well, <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to load up, but what you'll get is like a ghosting effect. You have to wait for that circle to load. And now I'm going to show you colour correction. This is the correction, and if you click on the arrow, then it allows you to adjust the colour the saturation and exposure of the shot. See here in the colour you can make it greener or slightly pinker. So it really depends on what you're shooting. Obviously this is an interview shot so we don't really want any unnatural colour in the shot. But sometimes it's nice just to treat tweak it just slightly and sometimes it gives it a better effect. But it can also add quite a bit of noise to the picture, which you don't want. This is just showing you what happens when you change the blacks in the saturation and the midtones. It can get quite grey if you go lower. And the exposure, say you've overexposed and you just want to bring it down a bit, but I think the exposure is right in this shot. You don't really want to take it any higher than that. 